Welcome back to The Mining Pod. On today's show, we're joined by Justin Orkney, Commercial Director at Standard Power. We talk about Standard Power's 1.2 gigawatt development in Ohio, how power companies and mining companies are integrating, and how to get a job in the Bitcoin space. Are you a retail or institutional investor interested in Bitcoin mining companies? The Miner Mag brings you free data and analysis from all major NASDAQ-listed Bitcoin mining operations to know who stands out. Check out visualized metrics and data-dependent stories at theminermag.com. Justin, welcome to the podcast. Long time coming. Really excited for today's conversation. But you're down in Tampa, enjoying the sunshine. Wish you're here in the studio with me in Denver, but it's okay. Yeah, yeah. I came down to Tampa to join the Bitcoin Bay guys. They were doing a meetup at dinner. They're launching their nonprofit. It's amazing what they've got going on down here. So I wanted to come down, be a part of it, show my support. And uh, Tampa's beautiful this time of year. So it uh, made all the sense in the world. And here I am. And you went to like some food thing, right? Like what was the best thing you ate there? Yeah. Yeah. So they, they were doing uh sound money, sound food was the theme of the dinner. And they were at a restaurant that is specifically focused on sourcing uh, ingredients and meat from the local community and cooking it in ways that Bitcoiners would probably appreciate. Uh, no seed oils was a big theme of the night. Uh, just making sure you're using all uh, original food, actual food ingredients. And so I think the best thing I had last night was uh, boar's head, or there was just some mm. strip of of pretty tough meat, but it was delicious. It had a great, great uh, salting to it, and it was incredible. And then, uh, you know, but the banana fosters at the end was, was pretty exquisite as well. So all I'm around really hungry. Yeah. I'm yeah. making myself hungry too. Uh, <laughs> it was great. It was really good. And it was, it was so exciting to see the message that, that they brought to the, the event, but then also the, um, the restaurateurs that were there that were excited to, you know, it was a, it was a new restaurant kind of opening up as well. So hopefully they'll get re- uh, support from the community. Sometimes restaurants that 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 step out in this direction might have a more difficult time than others in terms of uh, operations and and like and make, being profitable, you know, because it's definitely not the cheap way to source local and and cook uh, cook everything the right way, the healthy way. So um, it was exciting to see all that come together. Love that. Yeah, let's jump right into like standard power stuff. Let's Your title it. is eluding me at the moment, but I get strategy, right? Like commercial director, commercial director. I thought I saw strategy yeah. in the LinkedIn title, but give me a profile on standard power, what you're doing there. And then we'll, we'll dive into like the Ohio site you guys are building. Uh, recently I saw Max at the, uh, Bitcoin conference. We talked a little bit about what you guys are up to with nuclear power, but I mean, you guys are making waves in Ohio, which I think is going to be up there in terms of competition with Texas pretty soon mining. So definitely got to get your thoughts on it. Yeah, definitely. So uh, commercial director with Standard Power, maybe what you saw was uh, I generally refer to how I approach things as, as strategic Bitcoin mining. Um, and so uh, my role with Standard Power is is client facing. You know, we we host the, the largest miners in the world, the ones you've heard of, the ones that you haven't. Uh, we provide the capacity and the energy and the, the software tech stack for them to stand up their operations. Uh, our site in Conesville, Ohio, we're building out, it's going to be 1.2 gigawatts. So 1200 megawatts. Yeah, it's a lot. That's so uh, big. If it's not the largest in the Western hemisphere, when it's done, it's going to be right up there. It'll be bigger than Rockdale. Love the ride guys. Love what they're doing in Texas. Uh, there may, there may be one I've heard of that might, might fill out to be a little bit bigger, but regardless, uh, it's in Ohio incredibly friendly political jurisdiction there in fact our friend warren davidson a congressman from ohio was the one that led the charge recently to squash the proposed tax on mining of 30 percent on the electric usage so it's exciting to see um a representative from our adopted home state take take the lead on that very important so, so my, yeah, my role with standard power is to, to meet 
meet potential clients that might be interested in, in setting up shop at our campus. And I'll talk more about that in a moment, but then I'm also looking inward to the company, helping make sure that our software stack that we're putting in place uh, is, is, is everything that we, we need it to be. And uh, that's anything from you know automated billing, we're gonna be integrating Sonoda with uh, the Lightning Network for instant, instant settlement payments. Um, but then also we're, we're fully integrated into the grid in terms of demand response and providing ancillary services. So, uh, you know, having, making sure that those tech stacks like, uh, like a Foreman, like a Voltus, like a Lancium, uh, that those are there as well to enable the miners to do, um, not only, uh, demand response that we we um, we require to do in order to avoid the highest peak hour of the year but um but then also to uh to do economic curtailments and to help them operate their business model a- in a way that makes the most sense for them so that's my role i'm not uh yeah i, I just make sure that that's kind of all coming together and uh and then talking about it with with folks to see uh, see if it could be a fit for them. Love it. Let's talk about the Ohio facility a little bit more. 1.2 gigawatts is like freaking huge. For for people who probably need a sense of that, what would you normally compare that to? And then tell us a little bit about the demand response stuff for Ohio. I wonder if there's any difference between Ohio's demand response and Texas or if it's all sort of the same thing because yeah. we always talk about Texas demand response but not other jurisdictions. Demand response as a concept, is it, it does exist outside of Texas. Uh, and, and, you know, it was, it was what I was working at Duke Energy, or what I was working on at Duke Energy before uh, I made the, the move to where I am now. And so it's, it, it exists all over the place. Uh, and Ohio is, is similar in that regard uh, in terms of market structure to Texas. It's, it is a deregulated market. And so you have uh, the ability to bid into the market and provide ancillary services and curtailments uh, back to the system to, and then to get compensated for them in, in very similar ways that, that happens in Texas. Uh, so that's really exciting. In terms of the 1.2 gigawatts, uh, what, does that, what does that mean? Uh, I think, you know, if, for those that are, are aware of the demand response event in Texas, that was incredible. It was probably the largest one in human history over the winter, over Christmas weekend this past winter. That 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 probably not necessarily single handedly, but if it didn't happen, they would have had blackouts. But uh, that was probably around one to two to one point five gigawatts. I've heard maybe even upwards of one point eight gigawatts. But that's how much shut off in in Texas over the Christmas weekend. And so our site of 1.2 gigawatts kind of compares to the entire demand response that happened in Texas. Um, another another way to think of it is, you know, a really large uh, gas-fired power plant could be like 500 megawatts. You know, a massive <laughs> nuclear power plant could be like 1.2 gigawatts. So. So basically, we're taking over uh, the site of an old coal-fired power plant that's being uh, demolished as we speak. Mm-hmm. I got to see that. That was pretty cool. And that was one of the second lar- I think it was the second largest in the country in terms of coal-fired power plants, which means our spot is also one of the largest interconnection points in the country. And so, yeah, 1.2 gigawatts is really big. And, you know, if someone's got a small commercial mining operation you know, that's maybe not too serious, but like, it's kind of a, you know, I know, I know some guys that had run a great operation in uh, Graham, North Carolina. They're at around 11 megawatts, right? They've, they've scaled up over the years from one megawatt to five megawatts to, you know, so that's 11 megawatts. Our site's 11 uh, or 1200 megawatts. And then maybe just one last comparison is like, you know, a Walmart super center, um, they might use one to two to three megawatts, you know, of power mm-hmm. or capacity. Even they might they might not even be using that all the time. This is hundreds of Walmart <laughs> super centers, if not if not maybe a thousand. <laughs> I like that comparison. That helps me kind of conceptualize a little more. I'm sure it does for the audience too. 
uh, if they don't work in power. Tell me about like the energy side of this Ohio facility and then maybe also a little bit about like the sort of hosting contracted partners you're looking for. Uh, you mentioned like lots of different firms are currently working with you guys. I'm sure stuff that NDA can't talk about it, but the power side first, like it's mostly nuclear, right? Yeah, so so we're we're grid connected. As I mentioned, we're taking over the site of this coal fire power plant and the interconnection that it had to the grid. So now instead of the energy from the coal plant being pushed out into the system, we're receiving energy from the system. Um, so in it, it, it's grid mix. Uh, but that said, our our power our power contracts that we have available, we are able to partner directly with nuclear energy facilities on the same system and and get they call them en- emission free energy credits or effects and you know people can have opinions about uh energy credits or it's you know it, it, admittedly it is an abstraction but i think when it comes to bitcoin mining and uh nuclear energy the the pairing is is so uh so tight that it makes a lot of sense and so our clients are able to uh, receive these nuclear or emission-free energy credits, and they settle. They settle on the PJM market, so they can say that they're basically being powered by nuclear. And when you have the nuclear baseload generation just right in line with the mining load, it, it makes a lot of sense. It's like okay, that that's not as abstract as say a renewable energy credit. It's like solar you know solar doing this and in someone's yeah. electricity usage doing this which is really meaningless but um but yeah otherwise we just have the standard grid mix in ohio uh that said our next project will probably be behind uh the meter at a nuclear facility in eastern pennsylvania so that's really exciting uh that that nuclear facility was actually being scheduled to shut down and so we're coming in we're going to offload half of it for our mining operation, you know, this is in development. It's not a totally done deal yet, but we're very excited about it. And uh, and then the other half will stay on the grid. And, and then, of course, if we need to curtail operations and push our half into the system, we'll be we'll be able to do that. But yeah, uh, yeah, we definitely are very, are very big fans of nuclear energy. Uh, hopefully, in the next five to ten years. Hopefully it doesn't take much longer than that. Once the coal plant's gone, it's quite likely we'll be looking to install a small modular nuclear reactor on this site. And and again, this is happening in rural America. It couldn't be more exciting having industry return to these parts of the world that have had industry leave them, like this coal plant. Our, our other smaller facility that's up and running, it's just uh, 60 megawatts, about 10 minutes away. It's uh, an old paper mill that was shut down and abandoned. And, you know, with these, with this industry leaving, you know, everything else leaves these, that's why these towns are here yeah, because they had industry. And then when the industry goes, there's nothing left. And so it's really exciting to see, uh, see the opportunities that are coming in for rural America. And, uh, I think Mike, Mike Hobart coined a term, uh, Renaissance 2.0. And I really like that term, uh, rural revitalization, yeah, and man, these I think these these towns and they're probably going to become cities in the net and then over coming five to ten years, and it's going to be incredible to see see where they end up because Bitcoin mining is just the start. Like that's just the that's just the anchor tenant basically, and then our plan is to build out from there. Yeah, we talked about that a little bit, but it's kind of like the ESG thing of the G there, the governance, being a good member of a community, being a good neighbor. Any stories that have stuck out so far from your time with Standard Power and like operating these communities and how they're like responding to Bitcoin miners coming in? Yeah, I mean they're they couldn't be happier to have us there. You know when we do the ribbon, we did the ribbon cutting for our smaller facility in Coshocton. You know the mayor was there. I think the lieutenant governor was there. We might have had a senator and a congressman too. Everyone's excited to see this industry returning back to rural America to take advantage of infrastructure and to build out new infrastructure. You know, we're definitely going to be setting up education facilities and technical training facilities for, in these communities because we're going to need we're going to need local talent that can come in and help us run these operations. As we were talking about earlier, these are massive industrial scale operations, and so we're going to need 
We're going to need people on site 24 seven that are technically capable. That's, that's getting set up, you know, and then it, it just expands further than that. You know, you sponsor the Girl Scouts, sponsor the local sports teams. It's all going to be happening. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a similar story. You know, Riot tells the great story from Rockdale and it's all true. Yeah, It's all true. You have these people, you get the tax base, you have, uh, people now being hired to do these technical jobs. I was just mentioning before that are now going out to eat at restaurants. They're no, now they're, now they might want to, uh, get new windows or new paint or, you know, upgrade their homes, refurbish their homes. So now they're hiring local contractors. It's just, the second, third order, and fifth order impacts of projects like these, uh, you know, can't can't be under can't be overstated. So let's go back in time a little bit. I think if most people that are familiar with you probably are uh, familiar either from like you popping around conferences. I feel like you do a good job with that, and then also the uh, podcast you did with Troy Cross from two years ago, talking about your time at Duke and. Sure. That was just one year ago. That was just one year ago. It was only one year ago now. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Time flies. Not even yet. It, it dropped on June 25th of last year. Wow. I thought it was two years ago now. Well, it tells you about crypto. It's, things go so fast. Uh, yeah. The, like the Duke energy story there made headlines for a lot of people. Like Duke is a huge energy provider in the US. And the fact that they were like looking into this, uh, so like your name became just like synonymous between the two. Tell us a little bit of the backstory there for the audience who's not familiar with it. And then tell us about the transition from Duke into what you're doing now. Yeah. So, you know, my role at Duke Energy, I was there for almost three years. Uh, I was recruited to, uh, I was at the nexus of, of new technologies on the grid, uh, system operations, rate designs, regulatory policy, and demand response. So a big part of what I did was working on new customer programs for smart thermostats, uh, for electric vehicle charging, for battery storage, rooftop solar, uh, time of use rates, our legacy demand response programs. So that was kind of my my role within Duke. And then I and then I started looking at Bitcoin mining and had the aha moment, like, wow, you know, if we could design uh, a customer to achieve exactly what we're trying to achieve. And we were starting from scratch. Like, this is what we would design. <laughs> you can't ask for anything better than this. And so then I just started uh, trying to have the conversations internally. You know, generally, uh, you know, you want to, you got to socialize the concept. And then maybe you need to get, like, um, you need to do studies. You need to get outside consultants. So it, it, this is pretty standard procedure, you know, because ultimately, if you want to end up going to the regulatory commission, to file for a new program or a new rate design, you need to have uh, you need to have stuff that in place to back up why it makes sense, right? You can't just go in and tell them we're yeah. going to do this. That's not how it works. Uh, and so I just kind of started going down that path with respect to Bitcoin mining, and um, you know, having those conversations with system uh, planning engineers talking to our key account reps, the, our, our salesmen, if you will, like what is, who, who, who is tapping you on the shoulder? Who does want to interconnect our system? What does the industry look like from your perspective? Uh, talking to the, the engineer and system operators, like, well, I already knew, I already knew what the challenge is facing. Like that's what I've been dealing with at the uh, electric industry for 10 years now inside was I knew, I know the challenges that they're facing in terms of integrating unreliable intermittent generation on the system in terms of trying to build out electric vehicle charging infrastructure in terms of, you know, customers adopting new internet connected technologies like smart thermostats and, uh, you know, and then doing rooftop solar and battery storage. I was all aware of how all, you know, how, how we can use that. And so trying to help them understand, look guys, like Bitcoin mining actually is everything that you've been looking for. Yeah. And, so, you know, that was, that was my role within Duke. I basically took it on. And so I was the one spinning up that study with the outside consultant, doing the market assessment and the technology assessment of Bitcoin mining to help put in place the pieces so that ultimately when they do go to the commission and file for like a special rate design or a special demand response program, they're going to have, uh, they're going to have this backup ready to go. They've done their due diligence. And so that's just what I shared with the world the, that what I was working on 
And yeah, I, I couldn't be happier than I did it. You know, there was a little bit of a uh, little bit of consternation, I suppose, <laughs> that I didn't do. You know, usually if I know I'm doing the right thing and I'm doing the right thing and I share it, I go to conferences, like you said, I talk about it. That's been my life for a while now. Yeah. It's just now talking about Bitcoin mining. I used to be talking about rooftop solar, community solar, battery storage, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, it wasn't a surprise that Bitcoin and Bitcoin mining was a sensitive topic to one of the largest electric utilities in the country. So anyway, uh, it was it was everything I wanted, everything I needed to transition my career to be uh, where I am now on the kind of the other side of the fence. Yeah. Uh, working with the electric utilities, but from the Bitcoin mining perspective and and then but still pursuing all that strategic grid integration and uh, and everything that Bitcoin mining has to offer to to the electric grid. But then as we talk about the rural communities and just our. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, it's yeah. such an incredible technology. So I want to go on two things that you, you brought up. The first being like working at a Bitcoin mining company versus working in a traditional energy company, which is probably as very process oriented, slow, makes decisions methodically, has things set in place versus Bitcoin companies, maybe a little faster, like cobbling things together. Uh, so I want to get your take on that and then finish the conversation talking about like moving into Bitcoin mining, moving into finding a job in Bitcoin. Uh, but to the first part, what is the difference been between like working at a Duke or other energy companies in the past versus working at a, a Bitcoin mining company? I mean, I assume that most Bitcoin mining companies are a little bit more structured because they're dealing with like real assets versus say like a Bitcoin startup that's mostly on the software front. But what is your, what's it been the difference between those two positions? Yeah. Um, my role, my role already in the utility was a little di more dynamic than most. And so perhaps it wasn't that big of a transition, but certainly, you know, when we're talking about a, 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 an electric utility like Duke Energy one of the largest in the country or the one I was at for six years previously out in Arizona, which was a lot smaller, but they're both right. You know, it's not, it's not Texas and Ohio. This is a uh, regulated jurisdictions where the utility is a regulated monopoly. They own everything from the generation transmission distribution all the way to the customer meter and the, the billing to that customer. So they own everything and they have a relationship with their, their regulator. And so, you know, just, it makes sense in a lot of ways. Uh, most, most people, almost all, everyone working at the electric utility certainly takes their job of providing reliable, safe, affordable, and now clean energy to the grid. Like they take it very seriously. And that's always, that's, that, that really was um, something I was proud of and that, that meant a lot to me. And, and I, you know, obviously others that were there, you know, just seeing how seriously people take safety, take reliability. Um, but you, but certainly when you're talking about a regulated monopoly, I mean, you know, it doesn't matter what industry it is. You can tend to develop malaise, uh, you know, the, you can't, you can't sneeze without getting permission from the regulator, you know? And so, uh, there's, there's good, there's, there's good aspects of regulation that make sure that your power doesn't go out on Christmas <laughs> or at least is highly unlikely that that will happen. But, but yeah, it, you know, even with the, even with my experience with Bitcoin, like socializing the concept of Bitcoin mining as a grid resource, it's just like, you know, just banging your head against the wall over and over again. And, you know, I've been, we've been working on this thing for over two years now, two and a half years, and still like nothing super concrete has come out of it yet, except for some reports, which are good. But yeah, so I wanted to break out of that. I saw what was going on in the Bitcoin mining industry. I saw the the life, the energy, the capital, uh, just everything moving and shaking. And so that's where I wanted to be. And, you know, also just the the electric utilities, I think a lot of them, they they have they have the negative connotations, you know, some of it, some of it rightfully deserved, but some of it not not so rightfully deserved. You know, like everybody loves of reliable power when it's hot or cold. And uh, so it takes a certain amount of responsibility and regulation to ensure that that's the case. They've been, they, they really have, they're, they're so timid now of uh, negative headlines and this whole energy transition and, you know, decarbonization and all that. They, they're very, very, uh, 
I don't know. I, I feel like they're a little skittish, to be honest. And they, they've just been, I think it's a little bit survivorship bias too. And this is kind of getting to a topic I want to touch on with, with the ESG and everything is that anyone that had an issue or a concern about integrating endless amounts of unreliable, intermittent, arbitrary generation on the grid, like wind and solar, uh, those people are gone or they're quiet. You know, the ones that have been promoted through the industry are the ones that have been cheerleading solar and wind and now batteries. And so I think that you're starting to see, uh, I have concerns, you're starting to see the impacts of that. And, you know, you have the utility say, well, we can't build out more capacity unless it's solar. It's like, well, so what, are we just done? Is this just like, we're just going to put a hard cap on human civilization. Is that it? Like, what do you mean you can't build out more capacity? And so I think there's some real issues that they're going to be struggling with. And ultimately, we're going to be struggling with because it's our reliable grid that is going to be impacted by this. But uh, I wanted to break out from there as well. And so, uh, you know, it's much more entrepreneurial, much more dynamic in uh, where I'm at now with Standard Power. You know, I'm dealing with guys that build things and 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 get things done you know uh my team that i that i'm so excited to have been brought on board you know what they were doing before was they were developing some of the largest tallest skyscrapers in manhattan you know like they know how to permit incredibly complicated uh sticky projects you know and so what better than a one of the largest coal plants in the country that's being demolished like yeah we'll take that on um we're not actually demolishing the coal plant, but we're setting up shop right next to it. So we're, we're used to dealing with large infrastructure and getting it done. Like, no, this isn't going to be a five-year project. This is going to be a nine month project. Like let's go. There's, we got capital on the table and we have a game plan and we're going to make it happen. And no, 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 uh, no concepts too big to uh, consider. And so that's why we're already considering a small modular reactor, you know, in the next five to 10 years. And, uh, yeah, so couldn't be more excited with where I'm at and just the alignment of incentives and all of that is incredible. Love all that. I, w- I want to go into like finding a job in Bitcoin, which kind of prefaced earlier. There's a lot of headlines right now about layoffs. So like Coinbase laid off like 1200 people, not super yeah, long. Don't work ago. at Coinbase. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna list a bunch of like normie crypto places. Like Banson laid off like 30% of staff. Um, I've seen some other stuff. A lot of headlines around there, right? What is your take on getting involved in Bitcoin uh, from a jobs perspective? What were some things that were like helped you like get in there? Obviously, the background. Not everyone has the background of like doing what you did. But that being said, I'm sure there's some other things that people can pick up from. Yeah. And you know, you brought your passion in it that with the industry just so so perfectly and. I think that's a that can be a story for a lot of people, not just you. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, if I if I had just you know, let's say I just did the conversation with Troy and then I sat on my hands, like I'd probably be <laughs> I don't know what I'd be doing. It wouldn't be this, um, you know. So I think from my perspective, you know, looking at I, I was looking at Bitcoinerjobs.com. I was I was on Bitcoin Twitter. So I think those are important tools that uh, are just kind of like a a low level baseline for anyone that's serious about getting into the industry. And I think I think that if you are, you're absolutely right to have this mindset. You know, Uh, one you the transitions happening, right? The bridges are being built. This is a whole new system that's being developed with Bitcoin, and it it applies to your fiat mining job as well you know uh so i think it is important to be thinking about redirecting your career into into the bitcoin ecosystem and so bitcoin twitter and bitcoiner jobs are just like easy obvious places to start but go to the bitcoin i mean i went to the bitcoin meetup you talk to people you meet some people um and then yeah going to conferences going to conferences is important you mentioned i it's still i'm still approaching my first year anniversary odd mining disrupt was the first conference i went to and that was late july last year uh so those are really good investments you know yeah it costs a little money maybe i mean you're gonna have to travel there probably but uh finding a bitcoin conference that's close to you and and then going there 
um, reach out to people. Like, you know, I reached out to Dennis Porter on Twitter uh, and shared the podcast with him. I reached out to Troy, which is how the podcast even happened in the first place. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm open. I find all these people in the ecosystem are, are generally open. They might be really busy, but they're open to hearing from, from folks. And if you yeah. have an interest, if you have a passion, if you have a skill set, reach out, share it with them, you know, maybe find someone, you know, like with Troy, it, that was a, that was an, it made sense because he was talking about, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining being good for renewables and being good for balancing the grid. And, and so I was like, Hey, Troy, like, here's what I'm working on at Duke energy. And it, you know, it just made all the sense in the world. So if you have a similar type, uh, person or, or influencer or personality in Bitcoin that you like when they talk about what they do or what they're interested in and you're like, yeah, that's what I want to do. Like reach out to that person and see what they say. Um, yeah. So I think it's just really important. You got to get your hands dirty. You got to be active and don't, and you know, don't give up. Uh, you, probably it's going to be very unlikely that the first, first interview you have or the first company that you're in touch with, it's probably unlikely that they're going to end up being the ones. But, you know, for example, I was in Washington, D.C. Uh, on behalf of Satoshi Action Fund with Dennis Porter in the Senate office of uh, the freshman senator of North Carolina talking about the benefits of Bitcoin mining on the grid. And at that point, I didn't know it yet, but I was meeting my future CEO. And then later, there were six of us plus the senator. And then later that night, we're having dinner, a different six, but me, Dennis, and then uh, my future, what turns out to be my future CEO is sitting across the table. And we were having conversations. I might have been getting a little toxic or something with a national defense security fellow, whatever. And at some point, I turned away from her and I looked across the table to him. I was like, so, hey, Max, are you hiring? <laughs> you know, like, yeah. and here we are. So, um, That's awesome. you know, just, uh, you just, you got to go for it. It's not going to happen on its own. You got to make it happen. And there's a lot of ways to make it happen. Awesome. Justin, where can we find like some of your socials or keep up with standard power? Yeah. Uh, so I'm on Twitter, jorkney 5 I don't do a whole lot of posting, but I, I do try to share my thoughts uh, when I have them. And then Standard Power is uh, is on Twitter as well, so I think it's Standard Standard Power uh, is the Twitter handle. And, and yeah, uh, I'm, I'm I'm on Orange Pill app, so Justin on Orange Pill app. Nice. So yeah, I'd I'd encourage everybody, you know, get yeah, stay humble, stack stats, but then also just start start getting ingrained in uh, the ecosystem at that it, that that you find that it exists around you. You know, your local meetup. Bitcoin app, um, and just start moving and shaking, and and things will things are almost guaranteed to work out. Love it. Now, similar background about my story, same thing. It's gonna meet people, start doing stuff. Justin, thanks yeah. so much for your time today. Appreciate it. Awesome, great will. Glad to make this happen. Looking forward to uh, what comes next, man.